This week I want to talk to you about bad legislation and what it means to you as a private investigator or a process server. Hi, I'm Larry Kay with ShadowAnyone.com and the creator of the Investigator's Ultimate Guide series, which is premium private investigator training from someone who's been there and done that. And like uh, so many things that I do, I'm, I'm going to tell you, uh, and a matter of fact, you read the, the introduction to my uh, book, uh, 51 Dirty Tricks Bad Guys Really Hate. This is not legal advice. I'm just telling you about the real world. Uh, if you got if you got legal questions, ask an attorney. All right, let's talk a little bit about bad laws, bad legislation. This happens all the time and for a variety of reasons. I'm going to give you an example, a real world example, uh, and, and talk to you a little bit about that and then bring it out into the bigger picture. So uh, there are things called booster bags, shoplifters and thieves will modify uh, bags and purses in order to steal merchandise and uh, defeat the electronic monitoring systems at stores. Uh, clearly, they're doing the theft. That's illegal. But they're also using this, this added thing of this, this uh, possession of criminal tools, if you will, a bag that they've modified specifically for the theft. So, there is one local jurisdiction that uh, has proposed legislation outlawing uh, any kind of uh, bag or device that will shield the uh, electronic emissions. And, you know, it was proposed, and as, as of right now, as far as I know, it was pretty much shut down right away. But, and it has good intentions. I get it. I get the idea that, you know, here we are, five people sitting around at the uh, township uh, meeting or uh, maybe in, in a small municipality, city council, uh, or a county, county commissioners. Hey, you know, we've got merchants that we need to protect. You know, there's no reason people should be walking around with these booster bags. Let's outlaw them. Here's the problem. Legislation like that is frequently put together very hastily and by people who don't know what they're talking about. Uh, so, for example, the law, the way it was written and proposed, and I read the legislation for that, it would outlaw everything, including wallets uh, that protect RFID uh, credit cards and debit cards. In other words, these are wallets that have this shielding in it to prevent the theft from uh, RFID remote readers of credit cards. And this is the type of thing that, you know, they just don't think through that this technology, this science can be used legitimately and for good things and they would were gonna pass a, a law that was you know unduly restricted restrictive now here's the thing let's look at what's going on the people are committing theft that's already against the law in order and to say well you know if we outlaw these booster bags that will certainly do it they won't steal then and that's not really my experience with any time that there's been bad legislation the theft is there they're committing the theft. They don't care about one extra charge. Here's the other thing. There's already a law in most places in place to cover this. And it's called, in my area, called Possession of Criminal Tools, or PCT. And if you use a tool, a booster bag, to commit a theft, you can be charged not only with the theft, but also the added charge of possession of a criminal tool. Completely legitimate, already on the books, easy to use. So there's an example where potentially bad legislation was going to be passed to overreach and solve a problem that's already solved. There are plenty of examples of this out there in the real world. Uh, and, but what ends up happening is when they more and more directly affect us as private investigators, process servers, even my uh, security laws prevention people watching, uh, you know, bad laws can affect us. So for example, uh, one more example real quick is uh, in, in my state, it's illegal for anyone to do bounty hunting or fugitive recovery who is not a licensed private investigator, uh, the bondsman himself, or a, an off-duty police officer that the bondsman has hired. So, you know, this is a law that was passed. I don't agree with it at all. Things were going along fine without this law. Uh, but it was passed uh, in order, and I won't even give you the behind the scenes things, but it was pushed through and it was bad legislation. Uh, prior to this, we were not having a problem with bounty hunters and this type of thing. I, I did not see one single example that was presented to the legislature about this that was legitimate. There were a couple of, for example, one case that they presented to the legislature to kind of push through this legislation 
was uh, a couple of guys who were doing home invasions. And their fallback story when they got caught was, we're bounty hunters, we got the wrong house, we're sorry. But they didn't have a case assigned to them. They had none of the paperwork. They couldn't say who the bondsman was. They were clearly doing, home, they were home invaders. They were criminals saying that they were bounty hunters. I didn't see a single case presented of bounty hunters gone wild or anything like that. So bad legislation happens. It happens for uh, political reasons. It happens for economic reasons. Here's what it comes down to for you and me as, as we go about our lives doing it, working in this industry. We still have to follow the law. We still, if, if you are required in your state to have a PI license or be the bondsman himself or be an off-duty cop to do bounty hunting, then you still have to do that. You can't say to yourself, that's an unjust law, that's not fair, that's not right, and just go out and do the right thing, what you say is the right thing. Every week I say it, do the right thing, even if it's the hard thing, and part of the right thing is following your local stall, uh, laws and statutes, your state laws and statutes, the federal laws and statutes. This is just what we have to do. If we don't like them, we have ways that we can uh, address them. You can contact Congress people, certainly vote. Consider joining a state association. Many of the state associations of private investigators and security guard providers, those things, uh, have great legislate, legislative coverage. They'll even hire lobbyists if necessary, and they'll pursue fixing bad legislation. So joining one of those, you say, well, I don't really want to spend 100 bucks a year or 120 bucks a year or whatever it is. Might be worth it, especially if you are concerned about bad legislation. Remember, at all times, follow the law. If you have any legal questions, ask an attorney. This is Larry Kay with ShadowAnyone.com. Remember, do the right thing, even if it's the hard thing.